Hanuman could jump across the ocean simply by taking Lord Ramachandra's holy name. Material nature which works under the direction of the Supreme Lord, if he is the Supreme Lord, why did he have to take the help of the Vanaras? What is the truth? For the sake of teaching the common mass of people, by his personal example, even if we assume that Lord Ramachandra seemingly underwent the distress of separation from Sita Devi, even if we accept this, still what begs the question is, why did he have to take the help of the Vanaras and Vibhishana and others to fight against Ravana? If he is the Supreme Lord, why did he have to take others' help? Was he not capable of fighting Ravana himself? Does that mean that Lord Ramachandra was incapable of defeating Ravana on his own? What is the truth? The Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nedam yasho ragupatehe surayajna yata leela tanor adhikasamya vimukta dhamnaha rakshovado jaladi bandhanam astrapugaihi himtasya shatruhanane kapayaha sahayaha the Srimad Bhagavatam is questioning. It's saying, Lord Ramachandra's reputation for having killed Ravana with showers of arrows at the request of the Devatas and for having built a bridge over the ocean does not constitute the factual glory of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Ramachandra. This is a revolutionary uh, revelation by the Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Lord Ramachandra's spiritual body is always engaged in various pastimes. Lord Ramachandra has no equal or superior and therefore the Srimad Bhagavatam says he had no need to take help from the monkeys, from the Vanaras to gain victory over Ravana. The fact is Lord Ramachandra wanted to give an opportunity for his devotees, the Vanaras and others like Vibhishana to render him some service out of love. Lord Ramachandra also wanted to give Sagara, the ocean, an opportunity to serve him. By such devotional service to the Supreme Lord, the devotees become purified and immersed in the bliss of love of Godhead. If Lord Ramachandra's devotee, Hanuman, could jump across the ocean simply by taking Lord Ramachandra's holy name, then it is obvious Lord Ramachandra could do much more than that. But he refused to do so. He refused to jump over the ocean. By not jumping over the ocean, Lord Ramachandra gave an opportunity to the Vanaras and to the ocean to render him some devotional service by which they were benefited spiritually, not that Lord Ramachandra was benefited. In fact, Lord Ramachandra doesn't even have to personally fight against Ravana to defeat him. Material nature which works under the direction of the Supreme Lord, Maya Dekshena Prakritihi Suyate Sacharacharam Krishna is declared in the Bhagavad Gita. That material nature is powerful enough to kill Ravana. It doesn't require Lord Rama to come personally. But Lord Ramachandra still comes. He still descends to this material world just to exchange loving relationship with his devotees. This is how we understand Lord Ramachandra's pastimes. He was not a weakling. It was not that it was he was incapable of doing things by himself.